Are you playing around with a powerful complex image classification model and training it in Colab or Kaggle notebooks? But it takes too long to train with the free GPUs. Stay tuned to learn how you can instantly scale to train with more data, more GPUs, and on larger scale. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. I am Priyanka Vargadia, and today we're talking about scaling machine learning training resources right from within Colab and Kaggle Notebooks using TensorFlow Cloud. Let's say you're playing around with a powerful complex image classification model such as NASNet and training it in Colab. It takes a couple of hours to train with a free GPU that Colab gives you. Also, it may not even be feasible to train on large data sets because the training could go over the free 12 hours window. Wouldn't it be nice if I could instantly scale to training on more data and with more GPUs? And once you have the model trained, you often need to run multiple experiments to fine tune and optimize the hyperparameters to continue to improve your model. Hundreds of runs are needed sometimes to find the setting that results in the best accuracy. If you participate in a competition on Kaggle, you know that often very small accuracy differences separate winners in the leaderboard. This kind of experimentation takes a very long time and a lot of resources. Wouldn't it be nice if you could run all these experiments concurrently using more resources? Well, that's where TensorFlow Cloud comes in. It's a client-side library for training your TensorFlow model on Vertex AI. It provides APIs for a seamless transition from local debugging to distributed training and hyperparameter tuning within Google Cloud. You can directly use it from a Colab notebook or a Kaggle kernel. It handles cloud-specific tasks such as creating virtual machine instances and distribution strategies for your model automatically. For distributed tuning jobs, TensorFlow Cloud sets up model callbacks to capture model checkpoints and TensorBoard logs automatically. Now, I'm sure you're excited to see how it works. So let's take a peek into it. First, we will run the initial one-time setup to make sure the Google Cloud assets are all configured. Link to this collab is included in the description below. For that, we set up the project in the Google Cloud console at cloud.google.com and grab the project name and the project number. In the Colab or Kaggle notebook you're using, plug those in. Link to this notebook is included in the description below. Then make a choice depending on where you're running the notebook. I'm using Colab here, so I will set up auth for Colab notebook here, but if you're using Kaggle, then do the same for Kaggle. You need a billing account attached to your Google Cloud project. So the next step is to link your billing account. When you entered your credit card information during Google Cloud signup, it created a default billing account for you. That's the one we're going to use here. Next, enable the required Cloud APIs, including the Vertex AI APIs, which will allow us to kick off the training jobs within Google Cloud and the Cloud Build API to build our Docker images. We create a storage bucket in this step to store our temporary assets and to save the model checkpoints. Now, if we are going to also perform hyperparameter tuning, then we need a service account, which is a special kind of account used by the TensorFlow Cloud Tuner to create the hyperparameter tuning jobs in Vertex AI. In this step, we are creating that service account and providing it the right access to create the job. At this point, we have our setup complete with a project in Google Cloud, a service account that will create jobs in Vertex AI, and the cloud storage bucket that will store our model assets. We can reuse this setup with various notebooks. In each notebook, you will need to repeat the step two to add the Google Cloud auth credentials to your notebook. This will allow your notebook to connect to the project. Now that the setup is out of the way, let's run some distributed training and see how TensorFlow Cloud helps scale the distributed training resources in Google Cloud. This example is based on the image classification we are fine tuning with EfficientNet to train a NASNet mobile model. First step, import all the requirements. Then set the project parameters that we got from our setup notebook. 
and authenticate the notebook to our Google Cloud project. Then we load and prepare the data, split it into training and test data sets, add a pre-processing layers API for image augmentation, image resizing, rotation, flip, and contrast. Next, we load the model and prepare for training. Here, we load a NASNet mobile pre-trained model with weights and unfreeze a few layers for fine-tuning the model to better match the data set. Then train the model using model.fit, but notice the remote function. It determines whether your code is being executed locally or in the cloud and allows for the separate destination of fit parameters for local and remote execution. Now we're ready to train the model remotely on Google Cloud Platform. We submit a training job using this step where we define the parameters within the run function, our distribution strategy, requirements for any custom models, Docker configuration, and master and worker machine configurations. Once done, we can monitor our job in TensorBoard. This may take a few minutes as the logs start to populate once the training begins. Now that we know how to kick off a training job using TensorFlow Cloud, execute a distributed hyperparameter tuning job yourself. It's fairly similar. You will be using the Cloud Tuner function, which defines tuning parameters for your hyperparameter tuning jobs that are executed concurrently on Google Cloud Platform. You also get to define the distribution strategy the custom modules in requirements.txt, the Docker image, and the number of concurrent tuning jobs that you want to run. If you run into any question, watch my walkthrough in the video linked below. All right, in this episode, we talked about scaling machine learning training resources using TensorFlow Cloud. Give it a try yourself using the links below and let me know how it goes in the comments. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, reach me on Twitter at pvergadia.